there's 20,000 species of bees in the world and we think of the main ones as being honeybees but there's actually lots and lots of different kinds and these are really important for pollinating food so it's really important that we look after the bees. We've got about 270 species of bee in Britain. They're very good barometers for the health of the landscape. You know, when you get certain rare species, it means the landscape is in quite good health. We know a lot about honeybees in the immediate surrounds where it's possible to watch them, but actually in terms of larger scale movement, we know very little about it. I work in Whiteham to help coordinate their citizen science work and particularly the pollination monitoring. Whiteham is an amazing place to do this. It's one of the most studied woodlands in the world and there's this sort of magical feeling when you come here that really inspires people. It's partly education and partly recruiting people to do really exciting science. It suddenly opens people's eyes to the diversity of, of pollinators but the diversity of life and I think it makes people better observers. Almost everyone as kids was used to like turning over rocks and finding creepy crawlies underneath and that, and we sort of lose it a bit. One of the nice things is people really get that sort of childlike spirit back again. Guys, this is one of the most effective sampling techniques. I get paid to study the bees of white and wood. Bit of a dream job. Voila, Don, Le Don Laputa. I've got the list of bees for White and Woods up to about 80 species. And I'm hoping if I keep recording it, I'll get it over 100, that'll be exciting. Some people find them scary and some honeybee colonies can be quite aggressive. If you don't get in their way, they, they really aren't bothered by you. What I'm quite good at doing is spotting the male bumblebees and I pick those up. And people say, whoa, you're very brave. And I say, yeah, I'm very brave, yeah. And then I explain that actually the male, male bees can't sting you. We're sort of standing on the shoulders of giants here. It sounds cheesy, but you know, the father of ecology, Charles Elton, just started doing his work here. And so building on that history feels really important. One of the main things that we wanted to get Stephen Falkin to do was a sort of full catalogue, so we have a baseline. It's hard to have enough person power to get all the surveying done that you'd like to get done. So to have uh, pe people from the public involved just means that we can get sort of denser bee data, but also more consistent year-on-year -year data. Oh, what you got, guys? Oxaplan Bee is a collaboration between the Department of Plant Sciences at the University of Oxford and with us here at White and Woods. The idea is to build on the experiment that already runs in the woods, but to expand that to the city. Often the bees don't have anywhere to nest, so you can put a bee hotel up and it's, it's almost like, um, it's like having a bit of dead wood with lots of holes in, natural tunnels they can make their nests in. People monitor these boxes and we get an idea of which bees are found in different parts of the woods and how healthy their numbers are and things like that. You can really boost the number of bees by having uh, bee hotels in, in your garden. Really they're bee homes, I think, you know, it's, uh, it's where bees' hearts are. It also works well with Airbnb puns. <laughs> Love bee puns. Get a real buzz out of them. <laughs> we know that White and Woods is still going to be here in 100 years, and 400 years. So getting people to come in and really connect with their local biodiversity and realise how great White and is as a site for them to come to benefits them because they enjoy it, but it also really benefits us. There's so much we don't understand and I feel absolutely privileged to be following the footsteps of many wonderful academics, far cleverer than me, but it is always a pleasure to work in Whiteham Woods.